This is the record button. If we click the record button, a window pops up. What we're gonna do is click don't ask this in the future and close the stupid window. If you right click the record button, you are presented with options on what you can record. You have automation, notes, audio, and clips. We're gonna start with audio. If you want to start recording audio, you should probably have one of these babies. It's an audio interface. Now, notice that there are two inputs currently plugged into it. One of them goes to my condenser microphone. The second input goes to my Casio keyboard using a quarter inch plug. To record audio in FL Studio, it has to be done through the mixer. I recommend using a channel or a bus that is not used by any instrument or sample. If you go up to the little box right here, you are presented with options. Now, it's important to understand that these options represent the channels of your audio interface. Remember how there were two? Input 1 represents the microphone that I have plugged into the left channel, and input 2 represents the keyboard that I have plugged in. Now, it's important to understand that when you use both of them at the same time, they are recorded in stereo. What this means is that if I click in 1 and in 2, then my microphone is going to be tied to the left channel, and my keyboard is going to be tied to the right channel respectively. So if you're just trying to record with your microphone and you choose this option, then you'll be surprised to find out that your microphone is tied to the left channel of your stereo, which you don't want. What you want to do instead is tie a single channel to input 1, which you'll notice here puts us in mono, which is what we want. Now, now notice, notice when, I, when talk, I talk, I, I uh, uh, hear, hear my, my own voice, voice which makes, which it, makes it, it, uh, oh my goodness. my goodness. You can fix hearing your own voice by disconnecting the channel from the master. It'll still record when you hit the record button, but you won't have the distraction of hearing your own voice while you speak. Now that that's set up, let's go ahead and start recording. Up here you'll notice we have a countdown before recording button, which plays a bar of metronome to allow you to get on beat before recording, which is pretty useful. Next to it we have the wait for input to start playing button, but this is more useful for recording notes. If you right click the record button, you'll notice you have a recording starts playback option, which means the second you start recording, it starts playback of the song. I have that unchecked for now, and right under it I checked disarm on stop, which means when I stop playing the song, it'll turn off record for me, which can be pretty useful at times. So that being said, let's go ahead and click record and start recording. Hey, my name is Jacob and I really like spaghetti. That's right, spaghetti. Let's go ahead and give that a listen. Hey, my name is Jacob and I really like spaghetti. That's right, spaghetti. Absolute fire. Now, if I'm interested in recording my piano, I can come into a new channel and tie that one to input two. Let's make sure the piano is on and turned up a little bit, but not too much, because I'd rather have a quiet recording that I can normalize than a recording that's too loud that'll clip. So let's go ahead and play a couple chords. Since it's tied to the master, I can hear it, which is less of a problem, because hearing the piano is a little bit more important than hearing my own voice while I'm trying to speak. If you hold control and then click on this channel and hold it, you can drag to the right and select two channels at once. Now when I go into record, not only will it record my voice, it'll also record the piano simultaneously. Let's give it a try. A work of art. Let's go ahead and dive into recording notes. First I'm going to get rid of this and place a new pattern down that's empty. The second thing I'm going to do is go in and turn off my keyboard from inputting audio and re-enable it as a MIDI keyboard. Next I'm going to go ahead and add an instance of Lounge Lizard. Let's go ahead and go into the Lounge Lizard and start turning on some parameters. We're going to want that countdown before recording and we could use input to start playing if we were in the middle of a song. But since I'm just recording right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and just recheck the recording starts playback. And what that means is that when I click it, it's going to send us off recording immediately. I'm also going to turn on the metronome so I can hear throughout the song the beat. Let's go ahead and give it a record. Alright, now that we have our notes, we can turn off the metronome and play it back.
You can always go up to here and choose a grid point and then hit Control Q to quantize your piece, but I'm not interested in doing that right now. If you're interested in quantizing automatically, you have that option. Over here on the right, you have all these little settings. Note start time, note end time, leave note duration, record to step sequencer, and automations in order to quantize to the grid automatically. I personally feel that takes the human touch out of it, but feel free to play with those settings as you please. Another reason that I like doing this is it also records your velocity, which is useful for getting certain timbres out of your instruments. Now that we have audio and notes down, it's time to show you how to record automation. Now, automation is interesting because it's also tied to patterns, and can be tied to any single parameter that you want. So let's go ahead and take our lounge lizard and bump it to a bus real quick. Let's just do 12 because it's out of the way. We can go in here and do a reverb effect that is super exaggerated. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to that. Now let's say we want to record turning off the reverb at our own pace. We would go in here, we would go ahead and click record. And as we record, we just bring down this knob Now you'll notice inside the pattern is an automation. We can access it by going down here and clicking on the event right here. Reverb to mix level. We'll see that as the song goes on, around right here I start controlling the knob. And if we play the pattern, it'll control it automatically. Another way this is useful, and this is just an idea, is if you're making some kind of bass noise, you can go in and automate movement with the EQ, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and try that. So let's go ahead, click record. All right, now we have another piece of automation inside our pattern. Awesome. If you're interested in removing one of the events, you can just select the event under here. Let's say we want to get rid of the reverb. We can go ahead and click the delete button up here, highlight it all, and we'll bam, it's gone. Now the knob will be turned up all the way the entire time. Cool. The last thing that there is to record are clips, which has to do with performance mode. I could tell you about performance mode, but it would take a long time and make this video incredibly long. So instead of doing that, I'm going to link a 9 minute video by ImageLine themselves that explains performance mode way better than I ever could, with a demonstration and everything. I recommend checking it out. That being said, that's everything I can teach you about record function in FL Studio right now. I hope you learned something new in this video, and if you liked it, go ahead and feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any feedback, go ahead and leave a comment. Other than that, I hope you have a great day.